Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. Last time we adventured all around the world and wrapped up pretty much every single last Kinstone Fusion that's available to us at the moment. And this time, now that we have done all that, we are going to be heading into the library to see if we can gain counsel with the Minish Elder. So let's head right on in. What we want to do is head right on up the stairs here. May well not waste any time. And in here you'll notice this guy. This guy is actually from the Wind Waker. Sometimes these books move on their own. I've seen it with my own two eyes. And don't tell me I'm crazy. I ain't crazy. Ah, oh, Sturgeon. Gotta love him. Anyway, out here, up top, we can flip this over. And what we want to do is we want to, of course, become Minish-sized and head right back on in. And if we approach this bookshelf right here, you will see that there are a lot of town Minish. And it would, of course, appear, as this is a library, that some books have actually been checked out. Hey, hey, hey! This is no good. No good at all. The humans have checked some books out of the library. Thanks to them, none of us can get back to Elder Liberari. How will he get by all alone? I'm so worried. I'm sure the librarian knows something about where those books went. I wish I were big. Why, I'd walk right up and ask where, ask her where those books went. So, it would seem that since all of these books have been checked out, we cannot get into the Elder's quote-unquote house. We can't get up the shelf because some human checked that book out. But at least we don't have to listen to Elder Librari's boring old stories. This is very unfortunate. We cannot actually get to the Elder yet. And this actually brings us to probably my favorite little side quest here in the Minish Cap, although it's not really a side quest, it is a required part of the plot. It requires you to go all around the world, and it lets you get some really cool equipment, and it also really builds the character of the world a little bit more. Because as you can guess, we have to go find all those books and get them returned to the library, so let's talk to the assistant. Welcome to the library. Say, aren't you Smith's grandson, Link? Hmm? The books missing from the bookshelf on the second floor? Yes, they've been checked out for quite a while. They're very overdue. Take a Hyrulean bestiary, for example. Been gone for ages. Checked out by a girl with a cat. She said she had a new cat at her house. Wanted to learn more about it, she did. Hmm. Now who do we know with a cat? Well, it just so happens that over on this side of town, there actually is a woman with a cat. Now, head right on in here and you will notice... There is a book. Huh? Say, look at that, Link. There's a book up on top of that bookcase. But how are we going to get it? We can't reach it, and we have no ladder. And I don't think just shaking the bookcase will make it fall either. This presents an interesting problem, wouldn't you say? And there seems to be a letter over here. Dear Mom, I'll be next door if you need me. Simple enough. So, we have to actually get to that book from a bit of a different angle. Now, one of these fireplaces was actually uh, lit earlier. And I put it out a bit prematurely, so if one of these is lit, what you want to do is you want to go over and swipe some water out of the river, and that will allow you to pour it on the fireplace and put it out. But we can actually come over to this house right here, and you want to watch out for this cat. Because if you're not careful, it will take a swing at you, and that is not good. Wow, that really startled me. Everything's scary when you're small. Simple enough, what you want to do is you want to come up here, and Link is going to show off a very incredible feat of strength right here. Keep this in mind for later. All he does is push the book off the bookshelf. Keep in mind that only took one Link, because later on we're going to have to be retrieving some other books, and it's not going to be so easy. Anyway, now that we've done that, we can return to normal size and head right back on next door. Doing that will allow us to come in and grab... You got a library book called a Hyrulean Bestiary. Very nice. Come right over here and you can see... There it is, right there on our menu. Very good. You can see I've spent a lot of mysterious shells recently. I've taken to sort of blowing a whole load of kinstone... Not kinstone, mysterious shells in order to ensure I get a new figurine because we're not nearly done with the amount of shells we're going to be getting out of chests and things, so I figured I might as well free up some inventory. Coming back on in here... Hey, look at that! Our long-lost copy of Hyrulean Bestiary! Link, are you returning this book? Thank you so much! I can't begin to describe how much I'm looking forward to putting this back. Talk to her again. The next overdue book is... let's see... 
Ah oh, yes, of course, Legend of the Picori. It's been out forever. It was checked out by a somewhat absent-minded scholar, I believe. Now, it just so happens, we encountered someone like that as well. Down here, you will notice that there was this house that I attempted to enter, but unfortunately was unable to progress in what I wanted to do there, but now that we have begun the side quest, we can do it. What you want to do, first off, is swipe some water out of your bottle, because as you can see, that chimney is going, and you can probably imagine that I'm going to want to get in this house to do that one fusion we couldn't do last episode. So let's head right on in. What? Huh? A book? From the library? Ah yes, of course. I knew this day would come. Please, come in. And we may now enter. It's pretty interesting, though. Everyone, like this guy, he knows that we're coming to get back his book. That girl, she doesn't know a thing, so you have to wonder, like, what that reaction is going to be when she gets back. Anyway, I just poured out my water. I wanted to talk to him, dagnabbit. Derps aside... I am a researcher of Picori legend and lore. My name is Dr. Left. You might remember this guy from, I want to say he was in Link's Awakening? What was that Dr. Right? Hmm. You hear about that book, Legend of the Picori, aren't you? Well, I hate to say this, but I haven't seen it in several days. Perhaps a mischievous little mouse has taken it? Well, I'm sure it's in this house somewhere. I just don't know where. I'm very busy right now, so why don't you just look for it yourself? Now, we're not going to be getting... Wow, voice crack. We're not going to be getting to this book for a little while. What we want to do is we want to pour water on this fireplace right here to start off with. As you can see, we cannot get into that minish cubby hole up there yet. Which is unfortunate because odds are that book is somewhere in the rafters or something like that because I doubt that a mouse would be able to carry it out of the house. I want to come over here to the carpenter's workshop. And now we've got a little bit of an adventure on our hands. We can head right up here, but unfortunately, as you can see, we can't get up there yet. But there's a little minish cubby hole over here, so let's see what this guy has to say. Hey, do you know the clues that reveal the location of the treasure? Cross the bridge that spans the rapid flow, through the land of the fearsome beast, until you reach the Misty Falls. The treasure sleeps on the other side of the secret entrance there. They say it's a magical tool that allows even little people to push big things. According to the legend, you're supposed to start from this house. How interesting. Now, thing about legends in video games, if there's a legend, it's always true. So what we want to do is we want to head right up this way and make a quick little pit stop in this house. Actually, never mind. We can't do this quite yet. Man, I just keep getting shot down at this point. And as you can see, we cannot actually clamber up onto the pavement here, so we actually have to cut through the stranger's house as well. And it looks like we actually have a minish friend right here. Hey, I've heard about you. So you're going to go ahead, are you? Well, onward to glory then. Just don't die out there, okay? I wonder if even these guys know what it is we're after. But anyway, coming across here... Bridge that crosses the rapid flow. How about that? And over here... Oof, ah, it's no good. I just can't get anywhere. Man, oh man, oh man. And now, here we have... The Land of the Fearsome Beast. I have no idea why they have a little bit of a cat pen in this town, but ah well. It looks like we managed to survive. And here, we have this fountain. I wonder if we can actually talk to that guy. I don't actually know how to get to him. And in here, who knew there... Whoa, I don't know what that was. Who knew there'd be some place like this behind one of the town's fountains? Well, let's get moving and see if we can find that item those Minish mentioned. Yes, we got a bit of a cave right here, and across there, you can see there is a piece of heart. Not going to be getting it in this episode, but we will be getting it in the next one, so keep that in mind. Got a bunch of enemies right here we want to take out. In here, we got a lot of these guys. Might as well take them out. And I think we're going to want our cane of Paki. Let's equip that all nice and dandy. Anything good? Ooh, a fairy. Fairies are definitely welcome. I've been running around with less than full health for like an episode and a half now. Spoing. Heading right on over here. We got a little bit of a mini boss, as this does seem to be a bit of a mini dungeon. Looks like that's not going to work as a strategy. Anyway, these guys take three hits to take down, as before. What you want to do is basically kill them all. Slashy, slashy, smashy. 
And here we have a treasure chest. Now, you'll notice we got a couple of blank slots over here next to the grip ring. Those are about to get filled in. You got the power bracelets. You're filled with strength, even while tiny. I really like this use of the power bracelets because in other Zelda games it basically lets Link carry much heavier things. But in this game, they're really powerful because they allow you to move things like bookcases even as minish sized Link, which is pretty crazy. Ow. Ow. Let me buy, cat. So as you can see, we've got this huge crate, and we can just shove it right on the side. It's crazy. You made it? No way! Yeah, impressive, isn't it? So now that we have done that, we can finally get that one Kinstone Fusion that I was not able to get last episode. You made it through that den of evil and came back alive? Amazing, woohoo! I don't know, it wasn't that bad. There weren't too many terrible enemies in there. But anyway, we can come in here and now we can show off the true power of the power bracelets. Watch this. We're shoving a whole bookshelf with all this vase and things like that. What is it? China? Silverware? I don't know. Shove it all across as a little thumb-sized link. How insane is that? I love it. So now we can head in here and we can finally fuse with this Minish. Only fusion we're going to be doing in this episode, but I definitely want to knock it out since it's available. If the house hasn't been built, he is going to be in that little mushroom house instead. So I guess by having this house built, you actually require the power bracelets because you don't need the power bra bracelets to get to this if the house hasn't been built. But anyway, what is this going to unlock? I believe... Yes, this is actually the third Castor Wilds shared fusion. Really weird how it does that, but anyway. Now that we have done that, we have spawned in the third lily pad, which is nice. They fit perfectly, I wonder. Does that mean we're in for good luck? I hope so, because... We are now officially over two-thirds of the way done with Kinstone Fusions. That is fusion number 67. So, if you're slicing it exactly, we have just passed the two-thirds mark, which is crazy. Anyway, we can now push the wardrobe and dresser on over and ascend up this way and finally get into this upstairs area. And as you can see, there are a lot of books up here. Hmm, I see. Oh, that makes sense. Human books are so interesting. And that guy Dr. Leftip living down there has great taste in reading material. And apparently chess? Okay. Now, if I recall correctly, we actually want to get out our gusk jar. Because as you can see, it's pretty dusty up here. Hey, look at this. It's a mess. Anyway, coming on over here. Oh, ha, hey. Phew, I want to return this book by dropping it down below. It's impossible without some extra weight here. But my brother is so busy with a book of his own that he won't help me out. Maybe I can do it if I try again. As you can see, even with us standing on this book, we can't actually knock it down from here. So what we have to do is, as you can probably expect, Alright, where is it? Aha! We need to split ourselves. So even though Link is perfectly capable of shoving a book off of the top of a bookcase all by himself, he actually needs to have three times his own weight to push it off here, even though it's more than a half off of this precipice here. And there it goes! Poomph! Now that we've got that, we can sneak right on back out of the house and return to normal size. So let's head right on into the carpenter's house. I really like this house, mostly because it shows the great sprite detail in this game. I mean, look at this. And look at this guy. It's beautiful. I love it. Absolutely gorgeous. Almost as good as Mother 3. Anyway, heading on in here, and... You got a library book called Legend of the Picori. Very nice. Oh look, you found it. Could I ask you to return that book for me, lad? Absolutely, let's do it. Alright, dog, I need you to move out of the way. This is kind of important. There we go, very nice. Head right on up here and across the way back to the library. Oh my goodness, will you look at that? It's our copy of Legend of the Picori. It's been checked out for so long. Link, you deserve a medal for all this. I am moved. Deeply, deeply moved by this thoughtful gesture. 
Unfortunately, there is one last book, and the last book we still need is A History of Masks. I think it was checked out by Hagen, the mayor. How could he keep a library book so long? He's a public official! Yeah, how could he do such a thing? We're gonna head right on over to the mayor's house and give him a piece of our minds for this. I mean, really. Ahem. Yes, that's me, Hagen. I am mayor of this town. What's that? You want a book? A history of masks? And you say I checked it out, do you? Yes, indeed I did. Or wait, did I? You know, these masks see everything that goes on in my private life. Maybe you should just ask my masks. Huh, how interesting. And how irresponsible, I mean really. But anyway, you see these masks? Boom! Destruction of property is always nice in the Zelda game, isn't it? Ah. Uh, but yes, as you might notice, also, these masks give quite a bit of money. And aside from this one, these masks will respawn every time you enter and leave the house. So this is a really good way to grind money. If you're in absolutely desperate need of it. Anyway, flip that over and shrink down and it finally reveals what the use of this Minish portal is for. We actually have to head right on up in here because these guys might have a bit of a clue as to what the deal is. The mayor took off for his cabin by the lake, clutching a book. We saw him go. But after the chest was opened, the road to Minish Woods was blocked. He won't be able to get through. When the mayor came back, he didn't have that book anymore. I'm sure he just left it at his lakeside cabin. He's pretty forgetful like that. You want to go to the cabin by the lake? Well, let me just mark it here on your map. Uh, yes, there, it's right here. You should be able to find it now. And there it is, right in Lake Hylia. We actually have not seen this cabin before, and it's pretty out of the way to get to. So what we're actually going to do, and this will seem a little bit strange, but hear me out, we are going to want to go over to Syrup's Hut in the Minish Woods. Cutting through Lake Hylia here, we are at the part of the Minish Woods where we can access Syrup's Hut, but we actually don't want to go up to her hut, we actually want to head back into this dig cave right here. Because... If we head way into the deepest part of it, I'm not even gonna let you, dude, you will notice that there is this ladder right here. Head right on up it, and we are actually in Lake Hylia, and up here we have yet another piece of heart, but as with the other one I mentioned, we're not gonna be getting it in this video. Rather, we're gonna be grabbing it in the next one. Anyway, up here we have yet another one of those... Really? We have yet another one of those sparkling trees, so as you might expect, BOOM! It is a Minish Portal. So what you want to do is you want to equip your Gust Jar, and I think you know what we're going to be seeing right here. And in here we have yet another lily pad. So we just want to puff our way all the way to the end of this, and luckily it looks like there aren't any obstacles, unlike that one in the Castor Wilds. Head right on down here. And hey, look, a treasure chest from a kinstone fusion, and here we have a kinstone piece. Very nice. Nice thing to just knock out of the way since we're right here. Oh, wow, I just walked right on to that. Any other day, I would have gone falling right into the water. Anyway, in here you will see that there is actually a book, and there's also a letter right there. We're going to have to try and read that. Push aside this bookshelf with your power bracelets, and shove that book right off there. And now, of course, can we make it? Can we make it? Yes, we made it. Awesome. Gorgeous. Now that we have done that, we need to head right on back across this little pond right here. And, oh wow, there's... No. Okay, good. For a second I thought it was going to respawn me back somewhere else, but I guess that would have sort of screwed me out of the lily pad now, wouldn't it? Got enemies right here. wonder why they only decided to come out now. I guess books are really triggers for some enemies, aren't they? Returning to normal size right here. Head right on around and in the house, and... You got a library book called A History of Masks. Very good, and here we have a note. Hagen's words of wisdom. If you can't solve a problem, just ran headlong into it. Bam! Huh, I have to wonder, can you actually knock that book off of this with the Pegasus boots? I'm actually legitimately not sure. I'm going to have to look that up. But anyway, now that we have done that, we are going to want to head back over to Hyrule Town. 
back here in Hyrule Town, now that we have collected the third library book, we want to head right on inside and turn it in. Would you look at that? I can't believe it. It's our copy of A History of Masks. That mayor of ours is a real piece of work, isn't he? It must have been quite a challenge to get this back from him. You're my new favorite person, Link. Thank you so much. And with that, you know, Link, you've now returned all of our overdue books. Now I can finally get that bookshelf on the second floor in order. Hey, Sturgeon! Books to shelve! Yes, yes! Here I am. I'm here. I'll have these books put away lickety-split. I love this guy. He's great. The bookshelves are back in order. Ah, I feel so... so... renewed. Enjoy your browsing. Indeed we will. And we are going to have some interesting browsing, something she probably didn't expect we'd be doing. But yeah, I really like that side quest because you sort of go like to all these different places that you've never been to before. You get that legend with the power bracelets, and you get to go to the lakeside cabin, and you get some backstory about the mayor. I don't know, I just really like it. Anyway... Hey, 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 listen up, listen good. The books are back now. It's true, it's true, haha. -ha. Now we can get back to Elder Librari. So you brought the books back? Good for you, thank you. Please take this as a sign of our thanks. And get 50 rupees, which I never actually knew was here until I went and did the research for this part of the LP. So I guess it's a good thing we grabbed that. But anyway, now we can head up here. And I find it kind of amusing how this is technically the same type of mechanic that required the grip ring, so if we didn't have the grip ring, we wouldn't even be able to climb these books to get to the Elder. This is a good thing that's a required part of the plot, otherwise that would have been kind of sad. Anyway, heading on in here, and we have... The Elder. Before you talk to him... You want to fuse kinstones? Yes, please. Oh, thank god I have the kinstone I need. Guess that's not the only kinstone piece fusion we're doing in this video. Fusing with Librari... This will spawn. I want to say this is going to be an enemy? Yes, it is. Golden Octorok. Would have expected it to be a rope, given how many of those show up in that area. They fit beautifully. This is a sign of good things to come. Real quick, I'm going to double check. I don't think this guy has multiple fusions. No, he doesn't. Anyway, you want to do that fusion first things first, because unfortunately, after this conversation, it'll be a little bit more difficult to do. Whoa ho ho ho! Oh, a visitor after many long weeks. Even Jotari has been away so long, I've grown almost... lonely. But what is that? What do you need? Hmm? You want to visit the Temple of Droplets? Very well. You are the first such brave person in a long while. Stand on the clover in front of me. Alright, alright. You kids today. No patience for an old man. Well, just stand right there, like I told you. Oh my god, look at his eyes. Man. Whoa ho ho. Now, open secret mystery panel. And down we fall. Whoa ho ho, wasn't that fun? Now then, it's up to you to pass this trial safely and recover the item you require. Oh, what fun! I do so love the real nitty gritty of adventuring. So, yes. Ugh, oh, ow, ow, ow! I just smacked my hip on something. Well, not my hip, my... whatever it is I have now, my brim? Whatever. That old fool must just love sending people on dangerous missions. And how did that Librari get into the Temple of Droplets anyway? I guess the answer lies up ahead. Keep moving, my boy. So yes, as soon as you talk to him, you're instantly thrust into this dungeon. So if you want to do that fusion after the fact, you have to go back all the way through the library to get to it, which is a little unfortunate. Now, not to spoil anything, but the library will eventually become inaccessible to us at some point. But don't worry, because Librari will actually move to a different location after that point in the game, so don't worry if you're watching this and you're at the end game and you're like, crap, I can't get into the library. Don't worry, he'll be somewhere else. I'm just not going to spoil that yet. But anyway, heading in here, we have, I believe, a new type of enemy? Can we boomerang these guys? Not easily. They have these these uh, pincers that they can just shoot off, which is terrifying, really. They take six or seven hits to take down, which is crazy, so your boomerang is going to be essential. Just boomerang them when they have an opening and slash away. 
And unfortunately, we were all the way down here, so we couldn't see that. But defeating the enemies actually spawned in yet another one of these giant blue treasure chests. Open up, and you get... The Flippers. Press A to glide through the water, and B to dive. Hmm, yes, yes, yes. Why, it all makes sense now, doesn't it, boy? Librari used these flippers to swim to the entrance to the Temple of Droplets. So if you put these on, you should be able to swim too. Remarkable! Yes, now that we have these flippers, we can swim around and dive and do all these awesome things, which is great because these flippers, now that we've got them, they open up a whopping 10 pieces of heart to us. Not only that, but as of right now, they open up two new sword dojos that we can train in, which is crazy. We're going to have to grab that. Now, going to point out, we can't get this chest yet. And as a result of the library becoming inaccessible later through circumstances I'm not going to explain, this chest, which doesn't hold anything important, mind you, it will become inaccessible. So if you want like some extra rupees or mysterious shells or whatever this chest holds, Come back here after the Temple of Droplets and get this, because otherwise it will taunt you forever if you're a completionist like me. But anyway, heading right on down here, we have this grating. Go right on through it, and here we are, in the river! And now, we're right back out where we started. So now we can return to normal size, and head right on back through the library with our brand new treasure in hand. As you can see, in this episode, we have gotten not only the power bracelets, but the flippers, which means this little section of the inventory is now complete, which is super awesome. But anyway, now that we have traveled the world, collecting library books, and obtained the power bracelets and the flippers, which are going to allow us to get into the Temple of Droplets, I think we're going to end things off here. Next time on The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap, we're not going to be heading off to the temple quite yet, because as I mentioned, these flippers give us a ton of freedom in terms of world exploration, so I'm going to want to grab the last few things that these will allow us to get before heading off to the next dungeon. But anyway, I will see you guys next time!